Hello everyone. I'm Pooja Datta. I'm a clinical psychologist. Today I'm here to address the most frequently asked questions by parents. So the first question that is most frequently asked is what actually causes autism? Now autism, we know it's a neurodevelopmental condition meaning that it affects how the brain develops during the early formative years. So autism, it is caused by a complex interaction of a number of factors like genetic factors, environmental factors. So to say, not a single factor per se, gene or environment causes autism. Scientists, they are still exploring to the fact as to what genetic conditions particular or what environmental conditions cause autism. But in a nutshell, it is a complex interplay or interrelatedness of a number of factors. Now we move to the next question. And the question is, is autism genetic? Yes, genes play a very important role in the development of not only autism, but any neurodevelopmental condition. So some children, they have a genetic vulnerability or a genetic predisposition towards autism. Saying that we cannot specify that it is only because of the genetic factor of a child that autism is caused. The genes, again, they have a rather association or they are interrelated with a number of environmental factors. So if a child has a genetic vulnerability, along with that, there are certain associated environmental factors that child will have a greater predisposition or tendency towards having autism. So definitely not every child with a genetic predisposition will have autism and that is why autism it is a unique condition that is unique to all individuals. Okay the third most frequently asked question is what environmental factors may contribute to autism. So now environment means the surrounding of the child or the fetus when the fetus is in the maternal womb. So we can divide this environmental condition into three rather stages. The first is the prenatal, that is the time from when the mother conceives till the delivery, that is when the child comes out. The natal, which means during the period the child is coming out, that is during the delivery time. And postnatal is post delivery till the first few formative years of the child's life. So now if we move back to the prenatal conditions, definitely anything related to the mother and even father because the child is in the maternal womb, right? So the maternal age, even father's age, that determines, you know, or ra rather that can be one of the risk factors. The mother's mental and the mother's physical health. So any kind of, you know, severe or chronic mental or physical conditions that may impact the fetus inside the womb. Apart from this, the maternal lifestyle, the maternal exposure to any kind of substance, alcohol, the maternal exposure to any kind of very harmful substance like lead, like any kind of toxic or toxin, sub toxic substances. Apart from this, definitely the mother, you know, falling down, the mother tripping, in any case, the fetus inside is, you know, injured or impacted. These are some of the uh, rather uh, prenatal conditions that may be one of the predisposing factors towards the development of autism. Now if we move to the natal period, so any kind of you know uh, difficult labour, so the child was or the mother was not properly handled during uh, their delivery, the, uh, the, the fetus when you know coming out, so there was any kind of uh, exposure to any kind of toxic substance, to any kind of chronic uh, illness or condition that the child has been through, for which the child had to be kept for a prolonged period at the NICU, that may also be a precipitating factor. Apart from that, at times we see there is also asphyxia, that is oxygen isn't reaching sufficiently in the child's brain. These are some of the probable conditions that may also be a predisposing factor towards autism. Now last but not the least, after the child has come out of the maternal womb, so any uh, you know disease like at times children they are exposed to measles, uh, pox and all, tripping down any kind of hurt or any kind of injury that may impact the growing brain of the child. Apart from that, the child's physical condition, any kind of you know malnutrition in the child, this may also lead the child to not only autism but to other neurodevelopmental conditions. When I say may lead, which means there, are, there is no hard and fast rule that these conditions will cause rather it may cause. 
Now, moving on to the next question, what happens in the brain of an individual with autism? Now, this is very interesting. I will just tell it very simplistically and in a nutshell. Usually, individuals with autism, they have a problem in encoding and decoding information. What do we mean by encoding or decoding information? When the information via you know, our receptors, when it is reaching the brain, the information over there is processed. After processing of the information, we have this ability to express, right? So encoding is the process where the information is processed and the where the information is stored and we can express that information. So if I say that I'm hungry, which means I am processing some stimuli and I'm expressing that I'm hungry. This is the process of encoding. Decoding on the other hand is understanding, interpreting the information. So if I see someone smiling at me, my brain first processes that information and my brain then interprets that information. Okay, that person is making fun of me. So in autism, we see this problems in encoding and decoding these two process that is my expression as well as my understanding of others expression or emotion that is impacted that is why we see individuals with autism they have difficulty in self-expression as well as they have difficulty in understanding or interpreting others emotion or perspective and this is one of the core features you know of autism that is problems in reciprocal interaction now some of the challenges that individuals in the spectrum who you know with encoding problems is that they are not able to express themselves they are not able to express their emotions they are not able to express their bodily states right they are not able to express whatever is going on that which is very much needed in communication on the other hand, with decoding challenges, individuals in the spectrum, they cannot understand others' emotion, they cannot understand others' perspective, right? So, this problems in empathizing with others, that is because of the problems in decoding. So, this encoding, decoding problems, it is not related to any kind of uh, intelligence deficit in the individual, no. The individual simply has a problem in reciprocal communication. So that is a cognitive skill, but not necessarily that is related to low IQ. Now, another frequently asked question or a concern that parents have is, do vaccines cause autism? The answer is no. It has long been postulated that vaccines, they cause autism, leading to a lot of dilemmas and confusions in parents. But there is no scientific evidence. And whatever, you know, we say about vaccines causing autism, this, that, that is fraudulent and that is a myth. So I hope that some of the, you know, confusions or concerns centering around autism has been addressed through these frequently asked questions and I hope this information will be useful to you to an extent.